Okay, so now let's take a look at skill category four, source analysis. And this is when students will be looking at specific graphics, infographs, maps, pictures, and having to do an analysis, having to interpret qualitative geographic information, not quantitative information, from maps, images, and the like. So here's skill four, source analysis. Analyze and interpret, as I just mentioned, qualitative geographic information in maps, images, and landscapes. So this is where your students are going to have to draw conclusions from what they're looking at. And they will clearly see this as part of AP Human Geography FRQ exam prompts. So skill four specifically asks students to look at six different tasks. To identify the different types of information presented in visual sources, to describe the spatial patterns presented in visual sources, to explain patterns and trends in visual sources to draw conclusions, to compare patterns and trends in visual sources to draw conclusions, to explain how maps, images, and landscapes, cultural landscapes, illustrate or relate to geographic principles, processes, and outcomes, and to explain the possible limitations of visual sources provided. So let's take a look at these. Let's start with skill 4A, identifying the different types of information presented in visual sources. So it's basically asking you and your students to identify what the source shows. So the Google Maps images below, on this slide on the next slide, depict the Crimean Peninsula. Identify what is indicated by the use of dashed lines on the Ukrainian version of the map versus what you're going to see on the next slide, which is the Russian version of the map. Ukraine's Google Maps use a thin dashed line which simply indicates a provincial border. And you can kind of see it up here in the top center. You can see the dashed line. Okay, that's indicating a provincial border of the country of Ukraine. If you move to the next map, here's your Google image from its Russian service which depicts Crimea bottom center with a solid line reflecting an international border between it and the Ukraine. So two images basically showing you the same thing, but one has a dashed line showing a provincial boundary for the country of Ukraine, and the Russian Google Map image shows you a country boundary between Ukraine and what is being considered Russia by the Russian government. So that's a really good example of a basic identify question. Identify what you see on the map and what might be the consequences from what you're identifying. Okay, let's take a look at skill 4B. Describe the spatial patterns presented in visual sources. And remember, when I pose questions throughout these skill category PowerPoints, I'm wanting you to go back into the discussion boards in Canvas and respond to these prompts to see how you do, and then obviously use that as a role model for what you might have your students do in the classroom. Describe means to use words to give a description of the characteristics or essential qualities of something, as we've talked about previously. Give as many details as possible about the geographic patterns and processes reflected in the associated stimuli. Describe characteristics of the cultural landscape as reflected by this photo of the Christian bypass represented by this road sign outside of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. So you could talk about language here, you could talk about religion here, right? You could talk about landscapes that are set up for specific pilgrimages, for example, right? The impacts of those pilgrimages, you could talk about infrastructure. There's a number of different geographic concepts that you could apply just from looking at this one road sign. All right, let's continue on here. Also with regards to skill 4B, we're going to use some cultural landscape photos and ask you and your students to dig a little deeper than just identifying. No longer are you just identifying what you are seeing, but now you are describing what you are seeing. So for a sample FRQ, describe the landscape features and land and resource use. How and why do these photos reflect the cultural beliefs and identities of the people who occupy that space? All right, describe the spatial pattern represented by these photos taken in Cincinnati, Ohio. So 
we always go to the reading in Cincinnati every year, except for this year, obviously, because of our COVID-19 situation. So we're scoring exams from home and we're doing the APSIs, obviously, virtually as well. But here are three representations of cultural landscapes in Cincinnati, Ohio. And you can see anti-German hysteria. You can see formerly Bremen Street in the top left and on the right hand side. Um, this would relate to the geographic concept of sequent occupants, where you can see the imprint left on a landscape based on former residents or people who occupied the land in the past. And you can also see it with the church in the bottom picture. Um, that is a former Protestant church that is actually now the Taft Ale House. So it was a church that was turned into a bar and restaurant. Another great example of sequent occupants, how the buildings or the um, landscape uh, has stayed reasonably the same, except the people who have occupied the landscape has changed. Okay, here's another example of sequent occupants, 10 different versions of looking at the same scene. Cultural landscapes, the idea of looking at the same place, all right, but you may have a different impression of it based on its history, based on ideology, based on how much money people have. Uh, it could be environmental issues, all right, it could be uh, related to uh, the aesthetics of a place, um, how beautiful a place might look. All right, so looking at a place, looking at its details, looking at its characteristics, you can kind of get a really good sense of how landscapes have changed and how they reflect the people who actually live in this place. So as uh, Donald Meinig said, and you can see on that quote on the top, landscape is composed not only of what lies before our eyes, but what lies within our heads. So what's also the perception of the place that we look at. Okay, let's take a look at skill 4C. Explaining patterns and trends in visual sources to draw conclusions. And as I've mentioned a number of times in the first three skill category video lectures, explain asks you to give reasons for or make an accounting of. This means that you're telling why or how and using the word because. Let's see how the question changes from identify to explain by using the same stimuli we used with skill 4A. Explain why the border between the Crimean Peninsula and Ukraine on Google Maps is different depending on whether it is viewed from Ukraine as on the left or Russia as on the right. Okay, you might want to respond to that and see what you guys come up with. I would expect that's uh, pretty straightforward. And then obviously use something like this with your students in the classroom. Here's another example of skill 4C. And as a reminder, with the explain prompt, it is important for you to answer both the why and the because. It's basically a two-part question when you see the task verb explain. You might also be asked to explain the degree that something is accurate or to explain the limitations of what you are looking at. And we'll take a little bit um, more detailed look at that um, as we move through this presentation. So here's a helpful review graphic on centripetal and centrifugal forces, which are terms you might see that you might apply uh, to be able to draw conclusions. So you can see centrifugal forces divide a state and centripetal forces hold a state together. So more practice. So here's another prompt that you could work through yourself and also work through with your students. Explain how language, ethnicity, and religion are factors in creating centripetal and centrifugal forces. Make sure you are also paying attention to the how the data is aggregated scale of analysis that is shown in the map. Okay, I will get into it more in skill category number five. I use this slide with my students and Mr. Starch was one of the fellow teachers uh, that was working on this with me. So that's why his name is in this slide. This is a map here of uh, the former Yugoslavia and how it's been broken down into multiple countries after the fall of Yugoslavia in the uh, 1980s and 1990s. Okay, here's another example of having yourself and your students explain patterns and trends in visual sources. Uh, what is the impact of immigration from looking at this map? This is a language map of England and it shows you what the majority languages are or the percentage of different non-English languages are in certain areas of England. This is a local scale of analysis choropleth map uh, related to the country of England and languages spoken.
Here's another one related to where I teach in the Atlanta metro area. What conclusions can be drawn or explain the conclusions that you can draw by looking at this colored dot eth ethnicity map, excuse me, of Atlanta. All right, so it's showing you what areas are predominantly white, black, Asian, Hispanic, and other. All right, what conclusions can you draw from looking at the different colored areas at a local scale of analysis of this map of the Atlanta metro area? Okay, let's take a look at skill 4D. Compare patterns and trends in visual sources to draw conclusions. Compare, again, means to detail similarities and differences. So, for example, when looking at the following graphic, which I love to use with my students when trying to explain to them what they need to do when they see the task verb compare, both of the items shown are fruits. So that is how they are similar. But there are likely many more ways that these fruits have differences. For example, right, obviously the color is different. The shape is different. The taste is going to be different. The texture is going to be different. Okay, where they're grown is going to be different. So I think you guys can kind of see the idea, or hopefully see the idea of where I'm going with this. Okay, so here's another example of having the students practice and yourself practice with the task verb compare. Compare the number of majority Hispanic counties in the year 2000 on the left to the year 2000 and the map on the right. And the map uh, title is counties where Hispanic Americans account for more than 50% of the population in 2018. So how are the maps similar? And then also, how might the maps be different? And the data that's being shown in each map as well. Similarities, differences. Okay, important reminder on task verbs. The three task verbs we will most likely see on this year's exam were describe, explain, and compare. Okay, students will be required to apply geographic concepts within their FRQ responses. Now, within this skill category four, there's also an identify task verb that the students in future tests, as long as we don't use the same format we used this year, they will have to be able to identify as well, like what we saw in skill category 4.A. Okay, also with regards to skill 4D, compare patterns and trends in visual sources to draw conclusions. And there was actually a question related to settlement patterns and land use patterns on this year's AP exam. Compare the patterns you observe from looking at and comparing rural settlement patterns such as cluster, dispersed, or linear. And by comparing rural survey methods, which include meets and bounds, township and range, and long lots. Okay, so here we are comparing patterns and trends. All right, we're looking at linear, um, dispersed, and clustered in different um, settlement patterns. And here we are looking at meets and bounds survey on the top left and on the bottom right. Uh, this is a system that came from the British that uses landmarks and uses latitude and longitude to come up with boundaries. All right, here's townships and ranges. Uh, I talked to my students about looking out the window when they're flying across the United States, west of the Mississippi, and they see this type of U.S. public land survey, which comes from using latitude and longitude, what Jefferson originally called townships and ranges, six mile by six mile square plots. All right, and then here are our French long lots, and the best examples of this system in North America occur in Quebec and Louisiana. And these are long rectangular lots that typically are going to border and access to water source. Okay, let's take a look at skill 4E. Explain how maps, images, and landscapes illustrate or relate to geography principles, processes, and outcome. Again, this skill asks you to account for the how and the why. The geographic principle or process is illustrated by the map, image, or landscape. Again, remind your students to make sure you use the word because. So here's one for you. Try to respond to this one and have your students do the same. Explain how patterns of food production and consumption have been influenced by movements relating to individual food choice, like this farmer's market in Virginia that we see in this image. Also with regards to 4E, 
Another practice prompt could be explain what factors have led to the diffusion of religions and languages based on this image. This is a McDonald's in St. Petersburg, Russia, which exemplifies which shows stimulus diffusion. Okay, the idea of there still being a McDonald's, but very possibly, most likely, menu items might be different. Ronald McDonald might look different in images, for example, and obviously the language is going to be different. Okay, here's another example for 4E. This is the diffusion of religion throughout the world, which has been caused by a variety of factors, including migration, missionary work, trade, and war. Followers are usually born into these religions. Sometimes close contact and differences in beliefs have resulted in conflict between religious groups. Will the diffusion pattern be different if the religion is universalizing or ethnic? Well, one of the variations of questions that they asked this year on our edited AP exam process, uh, virtual AP exam process for this year, related to universalizing and ethnic religions and the idea of ethno-nationalism related uh, to religion. Also with regards to 4E, here's a couple of images of religious cultural landscape. Explain the diffusion of Christianity across Europe. There's your Notre Dame to the, on the left and Islam and Christianity in Spain. Um, there is the uh, Grand Mosque of Cordoba on the right. Also with regards to skill 4E, explain the diffusion of the English language. Okay, why do we see so many English place names in so many places around the world? This would obviously also relate to colonialism and imperialism as well. And then finally, our last skill for the skill category 4 is skill 4F, explain possible limitations of visual sources provided. This skill asks you to think critically about what information is not included. Because you're being asked to explain, make sure you use the word because in your answer. Explain two possible limitations of this map. So why don't you give this one a try. Okay, this is majority religion by country. Countries are colored according to the majority religion. Darker shading represents a greater prevalence of the majority religion. These types of maps are really good practice, not only for yourself, but for your students as well. And then here's another one for Skill 4F, which is very relevant and current. This is one I used with my students as we were prepping for the exam. And you can notice Mr. Starch's name here in the text because he went, wound up doing a Skill Category 5 with our students. And I'll be sharing some of uh, Mr. Starch's slides with you when I show you and go through a skill five category of video lecture and PowerPoint. Explain the limitations of using the following map to describe the impact of COVID-19 cases at a national and regional scale of analysis. The data is aggregated. The data is clustered at the country and regional scale. Scale of analysis, I can't say it enough, is really important for your students to wrap their hands around. And like I said, I'll be getting into this more in our last um, PowerPoint video lecture on skill category five. But you'll notice here that even though you see the information at the country level, you also see it at the regional level with regional boxes being shown. So, and the, but the map is actually a global map. So you have global map scale, but you have regional and national scale of analysis. And there are lots of problems with this map, and I'd be very curious to uh, hear what you guys have to say with regards to uh, what are the limitations of using a map like this to describe the impact of COVID-19 cases. Okay, and then we have a slide here for questions. So if you have any other questions, just like with uh, the first three skill category PowerPoints, please feel free to share them on the discussion board, and I'll be getting back at you in the pretty shortly with uh, skill category five. Thanks.